we told uh, Brock Burke and Spencer Howard and Jonah Heim, they're obviously on the team. So they are, they are on the team. Burke and Howard? Yes. And Heim. And Heim, yes. And Hearn will pitch the home opener game four. Game four. Yes. Okay. And we actually spoke with Matt Moore and told him he will not make our roster. With the Trevi, are you done with your? Yes. Oh, you're right. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that could not, was not easy for you. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah. Just, just the, the conversation that took place, and, you know, obviously this is, you do what you have to do, but some of them are harder than others, I would assume. Yeah, that one's a really hard one. He's been the backbone of our team. You know, my message to him was, you know, listen, this is a, this is a good opportunity for him. First of all, like, I appreciate the organization looking after him. You know, especially if we're going to make the decision to go with Jonah, you know, we were going to have to decide on one of the two. And, you know, what Trevi has done for us, um, I will never forget personally, because it was obviously we we're, it was under my watch for three years. Um, we had some good moments and some tough ones, and he was a rock in that clubhouse. Um, he meant the world to me personally. So to let a man of that character go, he was a big part of our clubhouse, big part of our culture. Um, still is his fingerprints will be all over this thing um you know when we win um, and i will never let him forget that um, so i just appreciate that as a manager um, but i hope you know I, I hope he's in a good spot obviously he's going to a place where where they know him uh, there's a few friends over there um, that are kind of in the same boat so uh, i'm happy with where it ended up for him uh, it's a best case scenario if he wasn't going to make our team so and i'm sorry if i'm catching up but the Toronto go, is going to go great Dunning Perez? Um, we're still working that out. I mean, we, uh, so Spencer Howard will be in the rotation um, in a limited role, though. Like, he's not going to be, you know, a hundred inning guy. We want to, we want to do right by Spencer, um, put him in, you know, the best position possible to succeed. We could use people in front of him. He could start the game, but we're not going to ask him to go out there and give us five or six innings um, until he, Maybe he earns that, and he, you know, but the way he's throwing the ball right now, the headspace he's in, we want to maintain that and give him success. So, um, however, we feel like the best way to do that is, you know, nine outs, twelve outs, maybe even six outs. Sometimes, like uh, we want to put him in a, in a position to succeed and uh, love where he's at right now. Okay, but you don't, you 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 haven't got a date for when he'll. he'll be um, he could actually. I mean, we we talked about maybe potentially going game three. So. To go all right-handers? Maybe, yeah. I mean, that would be obviously strategic at that point with that lineup over there. Very right-handed, very good right-handed lineup. So it could work out to where we could put somebody in front of them or just have Spencer open up and um, just use a, a barrage of righties against them. I asked JD about this, but when it came to the decision between Jose and Trevi, I guess where what was the deciding factor? Was it... JD mentioned just Jonah's still got more development, or um, you know, what yeah, was it was that? a tough one. It was in, there was a lot of you know conversations we had with with all of our staff, just about you know there, there's obviously Trevi has a ton of great attributes. If you just look at the player, uh, Jonah's you know got a lot of talent. You know he's at the upper echelon of like the talent in in the league as far as like a catcher goes. He's big, he's tall, he's a great receiver. He works hard back there. He's um, switch hitting catcher. Showed some power last year. Showed a ton of ability. Now he hasn't put it all together, you know. To but he hasn't really had the opportunity. I think last year was the first year, really. So um, excited about that. You know, Trevi's done a ton of great things for us. So you know the leadership. I can't you know, speak highly enough about uh, the way he commands the pitchers. And Jonah's gotten better at that. That's one thing we looked at the ceiling for Jonah. Um, maybe a tick higher. Um, he's still got to go out and prove it. So nothing is. You know, he's yes. He's given the opportunity to to be you know, the backup to, to Garver, and he's going to catch a lot of games because I'm not going to abuse Garver. We're just going to refuse to do that. So Jonah will have a huge role on our team. Uh, but I, you know, in meeting with him, told him, hey, man, this is, this is a great opportunity, but the, the expectations are high. You know, as a catcher in this organization, it's you know, Bobby Wilson and I talk about this a lot, but you have to be an elite leader in, in that role. And um, that's where probably Jonah Trevi had an advantage there. Because um, it just comes naturally to him, but from what we've seen with Jonah last year, 
heading into the offseason and where he came in this year was was really impressive. So we got to keep pushing him though. Um, we're not going to you know we're not going to um, stand for anything less than elite when it comes to the leadership in that position. When he is, is the expectation that when Mitch doesn't catch he'll DH? Like, um, not, always. not always. Not always. Listen, I gotta I gotta be really really. Str- Strong-minded on this one because it's going to be really hard not to rag Garver in the lineup. Um, I'm gonna. It's gonna, somebody's gonna have to grab my hand from writing it because it's he's such an impact in the lineup. Um, but I have to do that. I have to do that to protect him, especially on day games, after night games. Um, we got to keep him healthy. And you know, I've talked to him a little bit about that, and we'll definitely sit down with him and talk more like specific numbers. And um, but once I go down that path of like, ah, oh, I just should put him in there this time. And then just put him in there this time. That turns into a lot of games, and you know, heaven forbid something happens and he gets hurt, and now he can't be with us at some point later in the season. So I got, I got to do my job of like protecting this guy a little bit. You consider first base uh, a break in that regard? Like that's yes. Not putting him in the lineup. I think DH would be better. Um, obviously, with Nathaniel over there, it's. You know he's going to get most of the reps at first base, and Andy Abinas can play first base as well. So um, I would, you know, yes, he may get over there at times, especially if if Lowe goes down or something happens there. But uh, I wouldn't call it a, a huge break. He's still on his feet. Right. So you'd much rather DH. Him. Much rather, yeah. Yes. I would personally. It's it's, uh, but even then, it's still you know, is he available when he catches when he doesn't catch? So if he is off on a on a Sunday afternoon. Tie game, eighth inning, seventh inning, have a chance to pinch it potentially for somebody. Do I use him? And then he has to catch for the next, or if I hit for Jonah or something like that. So I'm going to have to at times like pump the brakes and be like, no, let's just get this guy a full day. Because so building up the arm and just you know, it's wear and tear on the back. It's just there's a lot of things that I, I don't want to have to do. But we want to win. So it's going to be tough at times not to, mm-hmm. not to go to him when we have him. So if you got 108 total total games out of him, if you got two thirds of the games out of him, whether that's at catcher or at DH, I would expect more than that. You said 108. Yeah. Yeah, I would expect more than that total. Total. I wouldn't catch him that many games. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Hopefully, we can get it under 100, um, with, you know, supplementing DH slash potentially first base or something. You can get him 110, 120. Okay. I mean. Decent amount, uh, okay. but the catching part of it, like we got to be really. But careful. you're not talking about catching 100 games. No, not unless. Listen, if we're in a pennant race come August, September. Right. Hey, we got to win. Like at that point, the the risk reward is more in the reward column. Um, not gonna kill a guy, obviously, but at that point, it's like we're trying to we're trying to win a division or something. I'm sure, you know, we can add a little bit more. So we well, use yeah, Burke. Early in the season, but would you consider? Like assigning Jonah to a specific pitcher so that uh, he would know, hey, I know every fifth day I have this day off. It might work out that way. Um, yes, I, I, we'll see. I think there's two factors there: the, you know, the day game versus the night game. The matchup, you know, with a switch hitting catcher it helps a little bit. If there's a tough matchup, you know, which guy gets killed by lefties, you know, and it's, I could, you know. That would be the good day to give Garver off the top righty. You can let Jonah have some advantage there. Um, there's just there's a there's probably three or four different factors there. But if there is some comfort from a pitcher to a catcher, we're definitely going to take notice of that um, and see if that if it plays out the right way or just hey we'll go heavily on that. Especially if it's somebody that's like been dominant with this guy. I mean we did that with Gibby a few you know last year he was dominating, so we just kept him with the same guy. Um, so if John Gray you know, dominates with Garver opening day, it's like obviously he's going to try to catch him again. <laughs> However, that lines up. <clears throat> Got it. So and I'm Burke, will you use him almost like in a piggyback dispenser? Um, not necessarily. I, I think we're using him as more of like a left-handed weapon out of the bullpen um, to go multiple innings. He's excited about it. Um, you know, we got to obviously look after him. But at the same time, like what we're seeing in spring training, we know that plays. If it's playing at this, you know, in this air, in this, uh, you know, in Arizona, and he's beating guys with his fastball, it's hard to beat guys with your fastball here. Because the ball just, you know, guys with, you know, vertical and they, they just doesn't play as well. But he's beating them here. I can't imagine what that looked like during the season. So I, I don't think it could work out that way. 
but I don't think it's going to be in every fifth day on Spencer's day okay. that we use them. But would, now, if, if Burke and Abreu are both on your roster, there's impact on other relievers who probably mm -hmm. were looking like they were going to be on your roster. There, have you informed yeah. anybody of anything? Uh, no. The, the ones I gave you are the only ones we've, we've informed. We still have you know, some decisions. We may tell some guys tomorrow or the next day, but um, that's where we're at right now. <clears throat> Burke, or Burke would rate as a surprise. Yeah. A pleasant surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, from day one when he, you know, the first, you know, he pitched last year, obviously, and saw the video. And when he came into camp, when I saw that first outing, it was like, well, everybody's eyes kind of got wide and said, well, that's, that's what we remember seeing before. And you see the velo and you saw the velo mid 90s, you know, 96 at times, 97. And you're like, hmm, interesting. And he beat really good hitters, you know, with that fastball. He, he didn't do it. Mid nineties, he didn't have any sixes or sevens in twenty nineteen. I mean, he. No, but it was he, he yeah. Was a different pitcher, it seems like. Yeah, and a lot of times, like the rehab process, you know, you build up muscles you never worked on before because it's just about rehab, and you know he's so strong. We figured there would be more in there. I mean, it was you know the fastball always beat people, but when you're throwing mid nineties and you know now it's in a, you know, it's, we're not asking him to throw a hundred pitches, so it's you know nine outs, six outs, nine outs, something like that. Like, He's going to be able to maintain that a lot better. Um, and like I said, he's—I he, distinctly re remember watching him beat some some pretty good fastball hitters with that. Um, and obviously, he's got other pitches to go with it. But the way he looks right now is it's pretty elite. He hasn't always been that jacked, has he? He's been on a weight. That's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> and it's, it's funny how pitchers that that go through the rehab process—they just they're focused on so many more things through the rehab process to build, to, to protect whatever the injury was. And in the process, they just build up their body so much better because it's, there's no break. You know, Kami and our, and our guys here, hats off to them. Um, what they've done with him, what they've done with Bush, and, and so many other players that have gone through the rehab process. Some guys have been here for a long time. You know, Chris Cease comes to mind on the minor league. He's like, they build these guys up and they look like Megatron at the end, you know, and all of a sudden they throw harder, they hit it harder just because you almost want to put everybody through it. <laughs> just say, hey, just come and train with our rehab people because they're going to make you better. And, you know, that's ideally what we would like all of our players to do in the offseason um, because they just can't take a day off. It's just they want to, you know, Brock Burke has been hungry to get back to this position and he puts so much work in. And now he's starting to, the first day he threw, it was almost like he was relieved. Like, wow, that's cool. That's cool to see that ball coming out of my hand, you know, looking up and saying 96 and going, watching these hitters foul him off over here every time and then blowing it right by him. It's like, wow, that's, that plays a little better than, than it ever has. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool story. Is there something about his delivery that makes that fastball play up even faster? Or yeah, it so it's, it's an extension thing. It's definitely a vertical extension, uh, you know, Spin decent, but you know the extension is elite. It's like seven feet, I think. It's it's upper echelon of of, of uh, extension. So it his 95 actually plays like 99. So it actually adds mile per hour based on the hitter's reaction um, to it. So like I said, 92, 93, I always played with him because of the extension. But now you look at 96, it's it's a whole other level. So does a big outing for Matt Bush today, or have you already determined whether he's going to be on the team? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I think the biggest thing with him is health. For, you know, I mean, that's the way I look at it. This guy's <laughs> throwing 99 mile an hour darts up there <laughs> with some nasty stuff. So, uh, you know, he's got to, you know, get through today, see how it looks, and, you know, we'll kind of assess it. But um, he's looked great. He's put a ton of work in as well. <laughs> Um, he's had, you know, a ton of issues with his arm in the past, but where he looks right now, he feels healthy, looks healthy. Um, ball's coming out really good. On Burke, the one thing that I wondered about was starting. I mean, yeah. do you still view him as a long-term starter or? Potentially. I mean, it's the same with Howard, similar, similar to Howard. Just, you know, let's, let's start with this and figure out, you know, where we go from here. But I just think so many guys, you know, what he's been through, why would we, like, he's a weapon for us right now. You know, and it's like, when it's, somebody's obviously got to be in that 
you know, fifth spot or wherever the, wherever that spot is. And when we pitch it, it could be the third game. But whoever the, the fifth guy we've put on our in our rotation, you know, I feel like we can use them very similarly. You know I mean, like we can just find spots for Brock to pitch and said, do right by him, put him in good positions to succeed and let him go out and, you know, rip it for six to nine, seven, seven or eight, nine batters, uh, maximize them a little bit. And then if that turns into dominant, then we maybe transition them back into a starting role. But right now, we're just focused on that multi-inning role. So whether he had gone to AAA and started or worked out of your bullpen to start the year, was not going to be a significant difference in usage? Uh, I think if we sent him to AAA, he probably would start. Um, or maybe I mean, if not. If he went to AAA and started down there, he'd be pitching three or four innings max out of the gate, too. Probably. I mean, you just look at the mix that he has, too. It's, you know, the the, the changeup and the breaking ball are just okay. They're, they're decent. I mean, they obviously complement the fastball. The fastball is the, the real pitch. And, you know, if he had four plus pitches, then obviously you'd look at starter makeup. But, like, face looking at the, the stuff, you know, maybe it's better to just maximize them for one time through the lineup so they don't get two looks at him. Um, be really effective in that. Because it sounds like he's a reliever right now. Yep. Brock Burt? Yeah. No, he is a reliever right now. <laughs> for the yeah. foreseeable future. Like I said, I don't know. I, I can't. I don't have a crystal ball, but like, could become a starter. <clears throat> Obviously, the development of the, the slider, the changeup, and you know, we'll see where it takes him. But right now, I like where he's at. So how many, what do you got left? How many decisions would you say you have left? We have a couple. Obviously, the bullpen with the the ten guys, the, you know, the ten relievers. So that's that's. There's still a few more. Um, we still haven't. Stone. Yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah, I don't see us going any more now. We still have a, you know, extra outfielder, um, potential infielder, you know, with Kobe probably being uh, an easy choice, but we're still gotta obviously wait that one out a little bit. Um, but Marizink, Eli, like, there's still some competition there. So it's Marizink, White, Culberson, Carpenter. Yeah, and you can't, you can't negate what McCarthy's doing right now. <laughs> he's got blasting balls all over the field, so it's, you know, it's a good problem to have.